All right, Mr. Sotko here, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Part 3. And last time we left off, we were about to go to war with Chile. And my army is exercising, but uh, currently refusing to be exercising properly, apparently. So we're going to stop that, and we're going to let them prepare for war here. We're going to let them uh, just wait a little bit. And if you look here, uh, the estimated plan value and more reading material. That's all for you guys if you get the game. And we're going to go Superior Firepower Doctrine. I feel like this is one of the best doctrines. Uh, if you're low on manpower, if you're playing a really minor nation, uh, one of the best ones is just to go a Mass Assault Doctrine. Go down the right side as they are exclusive with each other. And when you get down here, you get a recruitable population of 5%, but Argentina is really not going to have that problem. Smaller nations will. Uh, so soft attack of artillery will increase. And so I will grab that. Um, you can also make that quite a bit faster if you just research army effort. Uh, you can go down that and uh, make your doctrines go down uh, your, your actual... Uh, nope. Uh, your actual land doctrines will go faster. 50% um, for one time for each one of these three. Um, but it's really not necessary for the first one. Um, you can if you want. Um, and it also gives you uh, army experience as well. So that you can make your uh, divisions larger. And I can already do that now. So we'll do that real quick here. And so that'll take quite a bit of manpower. It will go away. And we are just about ready to go to war here, I think. Um, the division is still preparing, but it pretty much always says that unless you let them uh, plan for a very extended period of time. But basically, an inferior enemy, we're going to go ahead and do this. And uh, <clears throat> to get it started, just click, and they will start it on their own eventually. And so we'll let them go to work for a second here. And I don't think they're going to step forward just yet so we can go through here and increase our production efficiency cap by 50 percent and the ai in this game is a little finicky sometimes they just don't quite do what you wanted them to do and like i'm telling them to go forward i do have an offensive line drawn but uh, they just don't feel like doing that right now Uh, so we sort of got a negative foreign policy there. Uh, so we kind of got uh, a little messed up. But uh, so I guess we're going to have to kind of do this a little bit manually. Sometimes the computer just simply just doesn't attack, um, even though you told them to attack. So we're just going to have to go through it ourselves. Oh, actually, you know what? The reason why? I'm an idiot. because I did not declare war. And if you don't declare war in time, uh, what happens is it'll go away. I'm not sure how long. Uh, if, if you wait a couple months, it'll go away. So that is my bad. That is why they are not attacking. Um, we can just stop and let them prepare for a bit here. That's fine. And that'll give us a little bit more time here. And we can get army effort. That gives us five army experience, which is enough to get another Mountaineer division inside our army um, in our template. And uh, it also reduces the time of the superior of, of the of this doctrine. It won't with this, but this next one will be fifty percent faster. And I have an open one here. So let's get uh, construction three. Construction three is I'm not a fan of really. Um, the reason why is because it's just factory repair speed. Um, but uh, you sort of have to get it if you want to continue going down any further than that. Um, so we're going to go mass factories here. 
And then uh, once we start taking really taking over South America, I'm going to make a lot of uh, ports uh, around and uh, so that I can my navy can be produced very quickly. So I have a navy here um, and it's ready to go. But I don't have much of a use for it right now. So it's just going to sit in port uh, for now. I could actually just... Um, Search and destroy here, here, and here, and they'll patrol all over the place there, and uh, just make sure everything's cool. They might get into a fight with Chile here. If they have any boats or anything like that. So now I need some steel, and I need some aluminum. Um, so what you do here is you just go to the trade tree. We're gonna go to steel. We're gonna trade with the U.S. Even though they're gonna be pissed at us for fucking with Chile. Uh, but that doesn't matter. Unless they absolutely go to war with us, they will continue trading with us. So we're going to trade that. It does take convoys for that. So you do actually have convoys. If you run out of convoys, uh, you have to make convoys, uh, naval convoys, to continue trading. Um, and naval convoys can actually get uh, um, taken out on the way to places uh, by submarines and navies and such. Uh, you know. So, uh, so we're going to get eight steel for one factory we only need two so we're gonna have a slight surplus and then we're gonna need aluminum two for our supplies so we're gonna get that from america as well so that's two factories down for us but as you can see now i have a surplus and now i'm making like three a week uh instead of like a year so that's a, it's just a huge huge uh bonus there um and I'm not using many factories, so I can increase that, make some more rifles. I can increase that as well. And it will bring down your efficiency as you add new factories, because those factories don't have... Uh, they're essentially just new factories that haven't had the, you know, the time to learn the efficiency of making the weapon. So uh, it, it'll go down, but it'll always essentially make way more as you add more factories. Um, and if you have so many factories that you need even more infantry equipment, you can actually make another line of infantry equipment and make even more factories for that. So I have three open, but I don't have any more steel. So we're going to leave it like that because I really want to take over uh, Chile here and grab their steel because 24 steel is uh, quite, quite a bit. Um, you usually don't get it all just because you, you still share some with the population of the country that you take. Uh, you can change your um, your rules on that, but uh, um, you'll you'll get resistance and such for doing that, and uh, they'll sabotage your factories and the whatnot. Not a good idea. In some cases, anyway. We're gonna go down army effort two, and we're gonna get five more experience and. Um, and we'll be able to research another one for 50% off, or 50% faster. And we're gonna slap two artillery in there, in this division. And so now we need a ton of artillery. We need 1,700 artillery uh, to fill the demand that I just made um, by putting two extra divisions of uh, artillery in, in the template there. But that's okay, it's filling up uh, pretty quick. Um, only need 800 or so, so it's not too big of a deal. And they'll get it during combat and things like that, so it's not entirely pertinent that I get it right away. And we can get artillery too. Usually what I do is I, I, I just don't even bother building artillery too. What I do is I just get it just so I can get these upgrades that increase my artillery damage. And then I end up start making artillery 3. And my superior firepower is almost done, so that's 20% more uh, soft attack from my uh, um, artillery, which is huge. And now I can get uh, delay, which is uh, increase in, in an organization for my troops, uh, which means they retreat less and such. Um, so and that's only 84 days now because it's a 50% faster because of the uh, doctrine effort I'm going down. Once this is done, I can get another one for 50. So that will go uh, fairly quick here. And you can make, you know, cavalry divisions and such too. But uh, for Chile here, uh, they'll get bowled over pretty, pretty hard by 
are generally pretty hard by um, mountaineers. So on the 2nd of May, I can begin to declare war, which I will actually do this time. So we'll just speed it up and just... Uh, there we go. And it actually says when it's finished, and so now I will declare war. And now the border is open and ready to go. So now I'm going to hit my execution plan, and then they will start going and uh, trying to get in there. Um, so now I'm attacking Santiago, and I'm winning. As you see, 79, it has to get to uh, 100, and it will push them out. If I get into Santiago, this is, they only have one major city. Uh, they have a couple um, you know, ports and such. But uh, if you take their major city, they will capitulate. A nation will capitulate. Um, if it's a big nation, they will just change their capital city several times. And uh, so it takes a lot more to take them down. You sort of have to chase them around and um, have a bigger war to do that. So these units here are all moving in and trying to converge on the point that I set. And cutting Chile off from the bottom there. And so I pushed them out of Santiago. And they're trying to come back in as well. And so I beat them. And so now I want to take all states. And then end my turn. And then done. And so now Chile is officially Argentina. And I get there steel so now look at this giant surplus of steel i have only 12 so i can make much more of these some more of these i can make some more support equipment and get everything going a little bit faster than what i had it as before so mountaineers did the job this time we're going to take the fighters away from there as there's really nothing for them to do over there and instead, we're going to put it all the way up here. And we're going to give it a bunch of fighters and some close air support. And we're going to send them over La Paz. And I think we will take out Bolivia first. Because why not? And so now, we're going to take our army... And we're going to do another front line. And we're going to start it up here. Uh, and make sure... This is a very subtle thing that is, is a little frustrating sometimes. If I try to start it here and then go around, I can't. So I can't make the line. I'm holding the button. I can't make the line. That's because I'm actually having my unit set on Peru. On the Peruvian border. And you don't want that. You can see how it kind of lights up the Peruvian border and not... The Bolivian border in green. So I want to switch it over to the Bolivian border and then make it go all the way over there to Paraguay. So I'll cover that. Then you need to make an offensive line and just right click and just do it kind of over the mountains here because I have mountaineers. They do well on regular ground as well, but they do very exceptional in mountain combat. And we'll speed it up a little bit to make them run up there just a bit faster. And they do have a long way to go, so you can't really blame them. And I'm going to build a naval yard there um, in Chile. And so we're cruising along at five speed here, getting our units all up there. And you can see divisions are not ready. They're not in position. So um, with them not in position, the estimated plan value is only 10%. So um, you want to wait and make them on the border for a little while. Uh, the higher the world tension gets, like the faster you just uh, sort of declare war on people, the faster you can justify goals. Um, because now it's down to 180 days instead of 200. And we'll do Doctrine Effort 3. And you don't really want to go over 22 combat width. 
Um, it's just kind of a, of a general rule. Uh, you can, uh, but only certain amounts of units can fight on any given square, uh, depending on the size of that square. So if you have an army that's uh, like all the way across, um, a lot of the times it's not very effective because they all can't actually be on the front line at once. And so, once again, I'm just sort of skipping tanks. Uh, don't really need them at the moment. Um, what I would like to do is um, get motorized eventually. And um, let's see, it's uh, 170 days. I can get that really fast if I just get uh, this here. And then get field hospitals so that I, I sort of trickle back units and I don't lose them as much. Um, so some units will go to the hospital and I'll actually get them back rather than just outright lose the manpower for good. Um, as I'm down to 48,000 units, um, and that's because I edited this template to make it so large. It takes manpower to run the artillery and all of these uh, mountaineer um, sections here and these as well. I can put a field hospital in here and then I can put one more or I can put any combination I need. Um, some combinations really aren't technically valid um, for, um, you know, just a mountaineer division. Like, you wouldn't need a maintenance company in a mountaineer division. Uh, military police are sort of um, best to have on a cavalry, just, like, have two cavalry, a small division. Like, so what you would do is you would just basically take away all this cavalry, just leave two, maybe four of them in there, and then you put just military police uh, if you research it. Uh, because what will happen is you'll have uh, descent... Uh, and resistance. Right now I don't have any resistance, uh, but uh, sooner or later I will have resistance. And they mess up your factories, they'll, they'll sort of sabotage you. And so cavalry have a very high suppression, um, and, and that is what you want. Um, so the suppression, the ability to suppress local resistance, um, and it's at 18 because I have so many cavalry in it. Um, really, their suppression is only two each, but that's better than the one each of a of an infantry unit. So if you have a couple cavalry and then you add military police, which add a huge bonus to your, your suppression, um, it works pretty good. And then you garrison the area and it gets rid of that suppression or it gets rid of that resistance. And then you, your, your economy in that area functions properly again. I have tons of political power, so I'm going to... Uh, you know what, I'm going to grab this guy here, political power gain increase, and a drift defense. Um, not, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, and then I'm going to grab uh, this one with the effects of partisans, which is basically resistors, um, um, is re is reduced. So it's, it's much harder for them to actually resist against us. And so I'm on the borderline now. I'm ready to attack, but I don't have, I'm not justified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually exercise, and I'm going to try to get these to the next rank, which is a 25% bonus, and they perform way better when you do that. Um, so I have another 50% here. So I'm going to get this. It's just essentially defense plus 20% for my units. Um, this doctrine here, this firepower doctrine, is just really good. Um, just it, it just provides a lot of damage um, overall um, as you get down the line. Um, I can go to extensive conscription if I need to. Um, that gives me 5% more um, recruitable population, but then it takes 10% extra time to train my individual units. Um, but I really don't need to do that yet because I still can go down the fascist tree. I need to research this, and then once I reach this and this, that will be a total of 7% uh, recruitable population which is pretty huge. Um, but now I'm gonna get my extra research slot. I didn't get that at first because you need more than 50 factories uh, before you can actually research that. So this only has two days left here and that is done. So now my extra research slot and that's when things really, really begin for me because I'll have four research slots, which is really nice to have for a minor nation. And uh, I'll be able to research very quickly and um, not really have to just pick and choose so much. Um, and so I can get tank designer. You essentially just uh, armor research time and reliability increases. Uh, so we're going to get that. Uh, Germany is interested in Scandinavia. Uh, Germany is currently 
Um, they chopped up Poland there. It looks like they're maybe still at war with them. Uh, Germany is also going after Amsterdam, um, or excuse me, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. Oh, my geography. Um, and so they, they need to get rid of those because right here is the Maginot line and they have 10 out of 10, 10 out, or three out of 10 forts, um, three out of 10, 10 out of 10 forts. Uh, it's basically, it's it's almost impossible to get through there. It's really hard. Uh, you'll fight for years to get through there. Um, so you really have to go around as the Germans actually did in World War II. Um, you can attack forts, uh, you know, if you, if you bust them up enough eventually, but uh, it's uh, it's quite hard in this game. It's, it's made very difficult. And so we'll speed it along here. Uh, still, um, so this is the uh, rank three. This is what they get when they re um, exercise, and they're all just about getting, as you can see, they're all popping in now. Um, and it gives a plus 25% bonus modifier to combat, um, to combat, and then instead of a, instead of a, just a straight zero, no modifier. So it's it, it's pretty huge, 25%. So um, you definitely want to try and keep them there. Their their experience will go back down um, eventually, especially if they were sent to the hospital, um, or um, so you you eventually lose it. Um, I like to go down this route over here. Um, your support uh, attacks are are a little better. And I'll get uh, an artillery attack as well. So that'll be a big bonus um, to support artillery. So this only affects support artillery. So that means it basically only affects this artillery right here. Um, so, but combined, um, that's 25% damage and then 10% um, damage from this one. So 35% more damage for that. Um, that's gonna be that's gonna be huge when that is done. And I'll bowl through Bolivia uh, pretty pretty well. We can check Bolivia, see what they have. Um, and it looks like they have anywhere from four to six divisions. Uh, maybe I don't have enough recon on them. Um, I could probably stand to actually get a couple of uh, encryption to see to see nations a little bit better. Um, I like to get light aircraft uh, for that. Uh, for the Navy ship research time, there's only one. Uh, for this, I will get uh, close air support. Um, you can change these later if you need to. Um, and we'll do um, we'll do more air support here. And then for the Navy, we are out of uh, power here, so we'll have to wait a little bit. Um, we can change this to limited exports if we wanted to, but factory outport goes down and. Uh, we do gain a bunch of resources for doing that. Another way to gain resources is to just essentially research all of these. Um, and it gives you 10% more to your resources that you have. Um, so like uh, this 46 tungsten here, it would be 10% to that, plus 10% again, plus 10% again. Um, so that gets you quite a bit more resources. But I usually end up researching that towards uh, last because there's just so many more important things to get out of the way first. And so we'll slow it back down here since we got a new fresh research slot. And we'll see what we can do here. Let's just get synthetic oil real quick uh, because we will be needing that later. Um, not so much now it's not too important to research that now but uh might as well get it out of the way uh now we need another national focus we're gonna go uh this motorized which is 75 percent reduction uh for a motorized research and we're gonna research this which will then allow us to research hospitals but i have to build um it's because the hospitals are mobile so that means i have to start building trucks uh, after that Infantry equipment uh, two is done, so we'll switch to that. And once again, as you can see, the product uh, the productivity goes way down, and the amount that I'm producing goes way down. Um, and even if I get to that uh, max, um, the productivity will will never be as much as the old rifles were, just because they're more simple to make, and you just you just don't make as many. Uh, but you do get a big bonus. Um, they do more damage, uh, more breakthrough, more damage, more hard attack, soft attack. Um, it's just better overall. As 
you can see, 22, 3, 6, 1. Um, and so 9 soft attack compared to 6. Uh, so it goes up quite a bit every time you do that. Um, and then, of course, all the other modifiers, the 10% modifiers and things like that you get throughout the game um, will increase that uh, a bit. Uh, Mountain Infantry 2. Um, as you can see, um, Argentina already had Mountain Infantry. Uh, but some nations don't. So you actually have to just initially research it. But the second uh, research for it, the second skill for it is pretty good. 5% soft attack um, and organization. So that's pretty good. So we'll be getting that. And we'll be going down this line again here uh, for more soft attack once again for the support. And I think it's just about that time that we're going to start justifying a war goal here on Bolivia. It's only going to take 125 days instead of the 180 because the world tension is at 100%. Mostly generated by Germany. And now the German Reich is in full force here against uh, France and uh, the West. They are not at war just yet with... Uh, Russia, now I can no longer see their focuses, um, and that's because their encryption has surpassed mine, and uh, I need to uh, sort of develop myself into the modern age of encryption and computers, um, which I think I might uh, begin to do so that I can start to see the size of the countries that I'm going to be attacking a little bit better, and I'll get a little bit better recon as well. Right now, all of my queue is full of stuff. And this will be done about the same time. Um, and that this is when I'm going to research uh, motorized here. So I'm going to wait just a moment. See, right now it would take 106, 159 days down to seven days. So it's pretty much just instant. I just, I'll just wait like a second here, and it will be done. And it looks like France had capitulated. Germany had beat France. And now we have Vichy France, which is a small portion of France that is, is now fascist. And we have a national focus to go down. So we're going to go down equipment effort. Equipment effort is pretty good because it's for infantry weapons and artillery. And um, so when I actually go to research um, anything in this, I'll get a 50%. Um, and um, you know, and also in the artillery as well. But I'm gonna research artillery. Let's see, don't I have any open ones? Nope. So France officially capitulated, but Vichy France will remain as a French uh, puppet of Germany. And now that I have the motorized out of the way, that allows me to actually uh, research field hospital. But I'm going to be needing to make trucks now to actually make it possible to have field hospitals in my um, in my actual army. Um, and as you can see, I have no rubber, so I do need to make a uh, a plant, a synthetic refinery here. Um, I'm still researching it, so it will be just a bit before I get that. Uh, let's check on Bolivia and see what date. Uh, we will actually go to war with them April 29th. So next, um, so basic, basically two months, uh, I'll be going to war with Bolivia, which is somewhat easy because all I have to do is really make it to La Paz and take their capital city. Um, whereas, uh, so these smaller nations, if you take the capital city, that's when they capitulate and they'll just, cause it's worth five victory points. They don't have any other major cities to really fall back to. So they instantly capitulate. Um, however, like if you attack America, um, let's say you, t you, you make it to Washington, DC, um, uh, they'll actually make their next one LA and then they'll make it Philadelphia and then they'll make it, uh, Chicago and then, um, Dallas. Um, so they'll, they'll throw it around on you. Um, because it's so big and their national unity is, is is high and they have so many major cities that they could fall back on. So uh, that's usually the way it goes. Some some friends of I, uh, one time was he was Canada and I was Mexico and we decided to take over the United States before they got powerful. So we went to war with them and I took over this area 
and he went straight to DC. So when you take DC, it's just basically a simple geography, like population geography. If you take DC, it goes to LA. If you take LA, it goes to um, Philadelphia. If you take Philadelphia, it goes to Chicago and then to Dallas. And then they pretty much capitulate after that. Um, so it's pretty much just like the, the, the highest population cities it will bounce around to. Um, same thing with Russia and Germany will do that too. Um, so some of the, the major nations uh, don't like to give up so easy. And so we are moving along now. And as you can see, it's 1940, and it doesn't quite move as fast as it once did. The days don't go by as fast. 1942, it'll start to slow down even more. Um, it's just the way the game goes. I think, I think they could optimize it a little bit more and just maybe... I'm not sure if they're like really portraying the units, even though you can't see them. Um, I think there's there could be some ways that you could optimize that a little bit better. Not that I'm much of a programmer or anything, so don't really know my way around a paper bag in terms of programming. So I'll leave it up to them to uh, try to figure that out. Now, see the it, this it says upgrade need because all of my units have rifles. But as I'm producing them, we're, I'm essentially giving them a submachine gun. I say here screw that rifle take this submachine gun and they're like oh cool because this is better uh, i mean i guess you could argue on that technically um so i have basic weapons weapons too and basic equipment um different basic equipment um and so i have such and such of this such and such of this and such and such uh, weapons too. I have no reserve of weapons too, because every time I make a weapons too, it immediately goes to a soldier out on the line, um, namely my uh, mountaineers. Eventually, uh, Rocket already does a little bit more um, than... Uh, than actual just artillery. Um, so eventually I will be going that route in, instead. But for now, I pretty much just go down the artillery line because it's easy to produce. It's, it's not that costly or anything. And we'll take a look at the world here. And slow it down. See, if you slow it down, it's no, it's it's no problem. But as soon as you get to five speed, it starts to get a little choppy. See that? Um, so, I think a little bit of optimization is in order. Now they're going after Denmark here. It takes a while for them to go after Denmark sometimes because it's so small, and it, you can't really get through too well. Um, and uh, Netherlands not doing too good. Um, Italy not doing too much here in Africa, getting beat by the United Kingdom apparently in Africa, uh, which is, uh, I suppose, is fairly historically correct. And so the date to declare war, once again, is April 29th. And we are just about to do that. So let's take out Bolivia. Declare war. We're ready to go and we've been preparing for a long time so our estimated plan value is 80 percent which is just huge and we will crush them fairly easily uh, more than likely especially considering all these are generally hills. Well, this is desert here, so I don't really have a big advantage there. But as soon as we get into these mountainous areas, especially in La Paz, it gets taken uh, pretty easy. And so I can have a bunch more armies if I want, but really my manpower is uh, not quite sufficient to hold another army right now. Or at least not another full army. And I just don't need it, really. So this uh, commander here is gaining some 
some skill. You don't gain much skill uh, fighting in South America uh, because the fights really aren't too brutal. But uh, if you have if you have like German commanders or Soviet commanders and you're fighting a big long front line, you gain skill very 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 quickly. And uh, so he's level three. So when he's level four, I get twenty percent to attack and defense instead of just fifteen. So it starts to uh, it starts to get pretty good. So slowly pushing them back here. And we'll just speed it up a little bit. And these guys are now retreating back, so I'll take, be taking those spaces. Thank you very much. And I'm going to send these guys straight into La Paz. And that will usually make them capitulate. I might have to just beat some of their army a little bit uh, to finish the job. Push them in a little deeper here. Because they're trying to make it Santa Cruz. Uh, which isn't going to work too well here. Take all states and turn and then just hit pass. And now it's mine. And they will have buildable, you know, search in there as well. I can start building a couple of those. And I'd like to get more industry so that I can build more stuff. Well, And I do need synthetic refineries, so I will, um, next chance I get, next chance I have some open, uh, some open areas. Now I'm going to go down the fascist tree a little bit more. Um, this one just gives me daily fascist su support. Um, it's not, you know, nothing too crazy. So, uh, so I have no room to build a refinery because everything's, all my states are filled up. So that's fine for now. Um, it's not entirely important, but... Um, my field hospital isn't done just yet. Uh, this assembly production will increase my cap by an additional 20%, and that's extremely important for mass production. And so now Argentina is starting to look pretty large, and my next victim will be in the next video here. I'm going to cut this one out, and then start a new one uh so stay tuned for part four uh if you like it or if you have any questions leave a comment down below or if you think you have something that uh some information that a newbie might need that i'm not telling them um go ahead and put it in the comment down below it's just you know a video a, a tutorial video of the game i'm just trying to be uh, as thorough as possible um you know with this uh i suppose i could be saying more things uh more tips uh which i'll try to work on but uh you know i'm only a man uh but uh, until then stay tuned for part four i'll see you guys next time